Hello, in this video of the ADLM 2000 series, we'll focus on the pattern generator and its features. As the other digital instruments, this one also makes use of the 16 digital input-output channels. All channels have 3.3 volts CMOS logic levels and a sample rate of 100 mega samples per second. The pins are 1.8 volt compatible and 5 volt tolerant. Plug in the module using the USB connector in the middle, open Scopy and click Connect. We'll start out with a simple exercise where, using the oscilloscope, we'll observe a clock pattern which we'll generate on a digital pin. Then we'll move on to a more complex example where we'll demonstrate digital to analog conversion. We're going to use the CMOS inverters as reference switches for a resistor ladder divider. The digital I.O. signals of the ADLM2000 module can be configured as standard CMOS dividers with a plus 3.3 volts supply. Basically, what we're going to do is generate a digital signal with the help of the pattern generator, which is then converted to an analog signal that we'll monitor on the oscilloscope. You'll need 920K resistors, 8 10K resistors, and the OP27 amplifier, which is included in the parts kit. The pattern generator can be accessed by clicking the corresponding button from Scopy's instrument list on the left. The tool can produce various digital patterns and provides individual as well as group operations. In the main window, there are the following widgets. The plot area, a list of channels and the run single buttons in the top right corner. At least one channel must be selected for the letter buttons to become active. Let's enable digital I.O. 0 by checking the corresponding box. All channels can be enabled or disabled from their own checkboxes. You'll notice that the run single buttons are no longer grayed out. The run button continuously generates the desired patterns, while the single button produces only one buffer of data. The gear wheel button provides access to a list of available channels. On the other hand, the sliders button prompts to an individual channel setting menu. The channel settings menu can also be accessed by double-clicking the channel icon on the left of the plot. Look at the available settings. You may rename each channel and set its trace height. You may configure the output type of each pin as either open drain, where there's only one switch connected to ground, or push-pull, where there are two switches, one connected to ground and one to VCC. In the plot area, you can see a preview of the waveforms to be generated on the enabled channels. You may choose from the following options when selecting the pattern to be generated. Clock generates a clock signal having user-selectable frequency, phase and duty cycle. Number generates a user-selectable number. Random generates random values at a user-selectable frequency. Binary counter generates a binary counter on the channels in the channel group. UART generates a UART message. SPI generates a SPI message. I squared C generates an I squared C message. Gray counter generates a gray counter on the channels in the channel group. Import imports a CSV file and outputs its content. Enable digital IO8 and set a clock pattern on it. Toggle the frequency, the phase, the duty cycle, and observe the preview updating accordingly. Connect digital I.O. 8 to the OnePlus pin. Run the pattern generator. Then, go to the oscilloscope and run it. Our signal is now visible on the plot. Now, let's build our resistor ladder as indicated in the scheme. Connect the 8 digital pins to the first 8 20K resistors. The, the ninth 20K resistor is connected to ground. The non-inverting input of the amplifier is connected to, to the output of the resistor network and the channel 1 of the oscilloscope. We've got a 10K resistor connecting the inverting input to the output of the amplifier, where we've also connected analog input 2. The 1- minus and 2- minus pins are connected to ground. Do not forget you need to power up the amplifier. To do so, you'll have to connect its supply pins to the M2K's positive and negative power supply pins. Go back to the pattern generator instrument. Disable channel 8 and enable channels 0 through 7. Channels can be moved along the plot by clicking and dragging their icons. Click the group button, select all the enabled channels, 
and then click the Done button. Double click on either one of the channels and open its settings menu. As the channel is part of a group, the channels in the group are shown and can be removed by clicking the red X button. Their order can be changed using the drag widget. The pattern of the channel or group can be changed in this menu from the pattern drop-down. The corresponding pattern settings are displayed depending on the selection. Let's set the pattern to binary counter, the output type to push-pull and the frequency to 256 kHz. When you're done, run the instrument. Let's not forget to power up our op-amp. To do so, open the power supply instrument, set the positive output to 5 volts and the negative output to minus 5 volts. Then run the instrument. Open the oscilloscope, set the time base for 200 microseconds per division and adjust the vertical range to 1 volt per division. When running the instrument, you should see a signal very similar to a rising ramp sawtooth from 0 to 3.3 volts. This concludes our presentation of the Pattern Generator instrument. The next video of this series will handle the Logic Analyzer. After that, we'll highlight the M2K's trigger options and then provide information on some of Scopy's more advanced features. Finally, we'll introduce LibM2K, our full-featured software API, which allows you to write your own custom programs that run on the module. For more resources and information on the ADLM2000 module and Scopy, please visit wiki.analog.com. If you have questions that these videos do not provide an answer to, please feel free to ask us on the Engineer Zone forum in the Virtual Classroom section. You'll find links to all kinds of helpful pages in the video description. Thanks for watching!